Hi, this is Jonathan from Barn2. Businesses and organisations need ways to store documents and other types of digital resources online and make them easily available to employees, clients and customers. The Document Library Pro plugin from Barn2 lets you store any type of document or digital resource and make it available online in a searchable, sortable directory with filters, either in a table format or a grid layout. Clients can preview and download documents and also multi-select documents to download. It's easy to add documents individually or in bulk and easy for your users to find them. You can use the plugin to create a document library, resource directory, audio directory, video directory, whatever you need for your business or organization. The document library can be added to any WordPress website. If you're already using WordPress for your main company website, that's great, and you can add a public or private document library to it. If you're not using WordPress, that's fine too. Just refer to the written tutorial linked to in the video description below to get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import documents and display them on your website. There's also a link in the description below to a written tutorial that shows you how to restrict access to documents. For example, if you don't want your document library to be available to the public. So let's begin by installing the Barn2 plugin Document Library Pro. Just go to the admin page and then to plugins, add new, and choose the Document Library Pro zip file you downloaded. And if you need a link to where to get the plugin, you'll find it in the description below. Once it's loaded, activate and head to the plugin settings and just enter your license key activate and you're good to go. Coming down to the settings, first we have document data. Here you can control the fields that are used to store information about your documents. These are the fields that will be displayed on the single document page. Remember, the single document page may well have a file, for example, a PDF or audio file attached to it, which can be downloaded. The document library page is where you can select the page to display your document library and the library listing will be created automatically on this selected page, but you can display it on any page using a shortcode. Here, you can choose to display your document library in table or grid format, and there are separate tabs at the top of the page to control these further. More on that in a moment. And you can also choose whether to display the library using folders. Under Document Links, you can decide to include a link to any attached file, and we can select how to display the link. And we can choose whether to make the fields in the library clickable here. Next, we have document preview. And here we can allow users to preview documents in a light box. And again, we can style the preview button. Under library content, we can control how the entries appear in our library, including the excerpt and content lengths. Then we have options for controlling the number of documents on a page, pagination and sorting. And I need to save any changes for them to take effect. So those were the general settings. And if I go back to the top of the page, you'll see we have further tabs of settings. Document tables lets us control how the library page will look if we've selected table layout in the general tab options. We can control which fields are displayed in the columns in our table, image size, and then under document links, we can choose to either show a link to each document multi-select checkboxes, so a range of documents can be downloaded with one click, or both. Under Document Library Controls here, there are options for the search filters, and at the bottom here, we can save any changes made so they take effect. Now, if you prefer to display your documents in a grid view, then back on the General tab here, we can change the default layout to grid and save our changes at the bottom. And then if we come over to the Document Grid tab here, we can control what the grid displays. And we can alter the design here too. And once again, save our changes. Let's start creating our document library by creating some categories. To do this, I'm going to go to Documents here in the admin, then click Categories, and I'm going to add one called Meetings and I'll enter the slug for it here. So this is just the URL friendly version of the name. Now this is the first category, so there is no parent available, but this is gonna be a top level category anyway. And then click add new category, and we see our new category listed over here. 
I'm going to add another category, and I want this one to be a subcategory of our meetings category. So this one is going to be called agendas, and I'll put agendas in the slug, and then in parent here, I'm going to choose meetings, and then add this new subcategory. And you can see it in the list here, and you can see this one is a subcategory of the meetings one. OK, I'm just going to add a few more categories, and then we're going to start adding documents to our library. At the moment, if I go to our live document library page, we'll see this. And it's empty because I haven't added any documents yet. Remember, the default document library page is set in the plugin settings here. But you can add a document library to any part of your website with a shortcode. So to add documents to our library, I'm going to go to Documents here in the admin and then Add New. And I can add my document title here. Any content can go here. And we can add media in this section too, for example, a picture. The excerpt can go here, and this is just a summary of the document. We can add the document to any categories or tags over here. And then up at the top here, we have a section called Document Link. And this is where we can either upload a file or provide the URL to an externally hosted file. For example, a file on Dropbox or Office 365. If you can't see Document Link, just check your screen options here and make sure Document Link is checked. OK, I'm going to make my Document Link to a file I already have uploaded in my WordPress media. So I'm going to choose File Upload. And you can upload a new file, or as I'm going to do, choose one I already have in my media uploads. And then add the file. And you can see the file is now very helpfully listed in the Document Link section here. I can now publish the document and it will be imported into the document library. So if I now go to Documents in the admin, we'll see it listed. And you can see I haven't entered any categories or tags for it yet. And if I refresh my main document library page, there it is, all ready with its details, preview and option to download or add it to a selection of documents to be downloaded. You can also add documents to the library in bulk. And there are two ways to do this. Go to Documents in the admin and then choose Import. From here, we can either drag files into this drag and drop area or just select files in the normal way. And the other way, which is great if you have lots of files to import, is by uploading a CSV file. And you'll find details of how to create your CSV file in the written tutorial. A link to this is in the description below. So I'm going to choose my CSV file to import. And here I need to see that the fields are mapped together correctly. And I can see that they are. And then once I'm happy, run the importer. And now our files have been imported into our document library. Let's go back to our main document library page and refresh it. There, now we've imported all our files. All our documents are available in our document library, ready to be searched, filtered, previewed, and downloaded. A really neat way to display the document library listing is with the folders option. So if we go back to our plugin settings, let's enable this option here, display the document library in folders, save the changes. And then if I refresh the library page again, you can now see our library is neatly contained in folders of categories. And by clicking one, this one here, meetings, we can display the contents making it really easy to navigate through the library. If you would prefer to display the library in a grid form, we can go back to our settings and choose this option here, Grid, save our changes, come back to our library page, refresh the page, and there, we now have a nice grid layout of the document library. OK, so that's been a look at how to create a WordPress document library using the Barn2 plugin Document Library Pro. It really does make document management easy and means staff and customers can find files fast, saving time. To get a copy of the plugin, see the link in the description below, where you'll also find a link to a step by step written tutorial as well. Thanks for watching.